Got you. We're live. Hello, everyone. Thank you. We were just talking about the wonderful Pro Am Overwatch, but of course, you're not here to watch them, even though you probably have it on on another tab. My name is Jaeger. In the booth with me is Dreth, and in production we have Pan. And welcome to you and I Esports Overwatch GG Leagues matchup today against Graceland. Dreth, welcome. Hello. Hello, I like the idea of us like being in a virtual booth. You know? you know what? That honestly, that's how I picture it. Like you're you're right next to me, and then Pan's like kitty corner from us, just doing doing the prod the thing. Background. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So. In reality, I'm sitting here in my office with a, a tortoise next to me. So I guess you're the tortoise now. I, 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 you know what? That's okay. I'm probably, that's probably my spirit animal. <laughs> Fair enough. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But, oh, we'll but yes. So we're back. We're we, after spring break. We finally got a match of Overwatch that we can uh, finally get to. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do anything fun with your spring break? Oh, oh, wait. Yes. And then I realized okay. I'm a full time. <laughs> we I work full time. Don't we play. work full time. Yeah. Isn't that tragic. I mean, I did I did have fun. I did go to Moline, Illinois and watch the U and I women play basketball. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so I actually that was actually part of my spring break. I, I did that, took a three day weekend vacation. Hey. Um they did lose in the semifinals though, but it's okay. They won their quarterfinal match. So it was it was very fun. I did I did thoroughly enjoy and I'll probably go again next year. Fun to take little ventures. So that's in Moline and not in, uh, sorry, I said Moline. In Moline. Moline. And, and not in St. Louis? They don't do like a women's arch madness? Um, No, because I think because of marketing and how that sets up, they want to do it like two different cities. I get Cause, it. Like, because arch madness is the men's tournament. Yeah. And then we have hoops in the heartland, which is the women's. And oh, I guess the heartland okay. is is that so so moline illinois is the heartland the one and only i i guess so i mean it's the quad cities so fair enough all right so looking here for our wonderful starting lineup for your you and i panthers looks like we got wildcat on tank unlasting on dps coonrad on dps and of course what they always have the option to swap out with vandium and then for our supports we have God's Jedi in Moonlit. Again, a wonderful young stacked team that we have going on here, don't you think, Dreth? Not just a stacked team, but look at this player icon game that we got going here. Oh, yes, this is true. I didn't Next even realize level. that. We got Wildcat with the Orisa Pachamari. We got Coonrad with the Torb Pachamari. We got the Ana Pachamari coming out from God's Jedi. Like, with. We are almost telegraphing our strats, but it's okay because we're just that good. You know what? That that's perfectly fine. I mean, if you think about it, it 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 does have to do something with the intimidation factor. Because I remember when we were both on a team. Heck, all three of us were on the team, including Pan. It, we we used to do that. We used to set it up with like the Pacific and the Atlantic team names. I remember oh, doing oh, that. Oh, we would spell some things. <laughs> Boy, oh, would no. we! <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to talk about that on stream, but we would spell things. Yes, <laughs> very professional times. We, yep, yeah, back when, uh, back when the stakes weren't that high and we weren't broadcasting matches. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's definitely for the best. We did not broadcast <sighs> those, but uh, looks like they're showing Ilios right now. I believe we should be starting on Nepal though, so they they might get that figured out here shortly, but. Is there anything uh, specific coming off of spring break you're looking for here out of you and I? Um, for this team, absolutely. Hopefully, of course, we're knocking on wood when I say this. They got some practice in over spring break. I mean, sometimes most of the people use it to decompress and relax. But, of course, sometimes they might be in the workshop working and practicing. So, coming off of this, I really want to see more of uh, mechanic improvement, especially if we want to look at the first of the season back in January, mid-February. 
I I really want to see more good mechanic gameplay, and I'm pretty sure um, that at least this first matchup we'll probably see their tried and true rush composition. So I expect them to use that for Nepal. I agree. I think uh, you and I has when you and I has been playing really well. It's because of their teamwork and coordination, and when they haven't, it's been because of the opposite. So I really hope they come out the gates here. Iron all cylinders, communicating, and uh, ready to roll here. Is I think we're just getting all the rolls sorted out here. We should be jumping in. Right, yeah. So um, while they're getting ready, let's talk about the last time that this team had some Overwatch action was uh, actually the tournament that was hosted by Co College. Wait, wait, wait. I think I, I think they played a, a match after that. Didn't they? Uh, against... I think so. The week after that, they played against... Uh, oh, they did, didn't they? They had a rebound match where they just curb stomped a team. Um, <laughs> can't remember who it was. I mean, to be completely honest, I forgot too, and I don't have any like. I mean, it was way to look it up. Who was it? Yeah, yeah, Whitewater. Yeah, yeah, Whitewater. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, University of Wisconsin Whitewater. That's yeah. That was. I totally ooh. missed that. <laughs> that was that was who. I th I think that's when I was on vacation. <laughs> it might have been. Oh, was Bill casting with me? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, Bill I does a remember. good job. So. Bill does a wonderful job. But but so so if I'm reading in between the lines here, you're saying that you and I just absolutely wiped the floor with this team. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was it was an interesting match to cast it was good to see the team get their feet back under him i guess i'll just say that much you know what sometimes after you're coming off of a tough uh tournament loss sometimes you need those games to just feel better you know what i mean just like how in regular basketball since i can use this and it's the time of the sweet 16 um it's like sometimes you just need to play a D2, D3 school to really get the fire started again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just make it happen, you know? Yeah. We're, we're doing what we can. But going into today's match, I'm actually kind of excited. We're playing an in-state team, Graceland University. It's Graceland University, not college, right? Yes, it's Graceland University. Graceland University from Lamoni down southern border, basically Missouri. They almost don't count, but we get to play <laughs> them today. You know, it, it, I do like in-state rivalry matches. Of course, at the collegiate tournament, we saw Iowa and Iowa State play against you and I. But it's nice to see these other in-state schools, too, because it, it actually brings a little bit home to everybody for it. You know what I mean? I mean, it just it feels more tangible. Definitely. Definitely. It's a uh, it's a good. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's. It feels good, man. You know, that's all yeah. I got to say. You know, it playing in state is it does feel good. And like I said, it, it brings a little uh, perspective into the uh, league itself, because normally GG leagues, you're playing like against Michigan teams or coastal teams. Specifically and... a Michigan technical college. <laughs> yes, this is true, because I think when we were on the team, we played like two or three. Every season, there was yeah. a trademark Michigan technical institute of something that we played against. So, you know, it you know it's, it's nice to kind of, like you, like you were saying, put a face to it almost. You don't know these people personally, but you know the school. You know where it's at. You know what's in your state. And maybe you know some people from high school who went there. You know? Like, there's yeah. something to play for. Exactly. And, I mean, I do know, I think this this is really stretching back in my memory banks, but I'm pretty sure that I had a friend actually go to Graceland. So I had a couple people from my high school go over to Graceland, yeah. I think yeah. I had someone from high school play football there. Oh, there you go. All right. So unlike the other matches we've casted, we actually get to play both sides. We, we do. get to we see get both to see perspectives. Everything now. We can and this see is, it all. This is so great. So, Dreth, what do you kind of expect from you and I going out into this opening match up here in Village? Uh, especially coming into Village, I want to see like the Ryan May, maybe a Symmetra, get on point and make them come to you sort of strategy. I think that's going to be the best bet. As it looks like you and I is coming up with something similar. They're trading out the Orisa for the Reinhardt, but other than that, I'm very happy with this comp. Yeah, exactly. Especially using that May and that choke point. 
And of course, Coonrad playing the Symmetra. It's going to be very important for you and I to, you know, get in there, get the Sim, teleport, get the wall set up. This is a very CC heavy team, which is going to be interesting to see coming out of the rush composition from the side of Graceland. Definitely. It'll be uh, interesting to see how you and I. Oh, was they missed the TV? <laughs> <laughs> you and I were oh no! This Bastion pick coming out from Graceland here is going to be out of a curveball, along with some really heavy healing. That Bastion's going to be hard to take down. Yeah, exactly. But it looks like we got the microwave set up on the point, and this is what you and I needs to do as both of these teams start to pick and try and utilize their resources that they have and take that space. So it's going to be real telling this first time as it unlocks for this map one, and already Moonlit really low on the health. But you and I able to get that switch. Yeah, I think they're going to be baiting them out as the wall does come out. Maybe not the opportune time for that. Uh, kind of wait till they get onto the point. But that Symmetra is cooking. Yes, and that's what you want. You want these prolonged fights, especially in the hot box microwave area, just to really limit what Graceland can do as we see another wall come up here. And quick, unlasting, able to take out Jack Attack and DJ Cage taken out by Coonrad, and of course from there on it's a sweep up in favor of this first battle for you and I. And once one goes, the rest of them fall here in these kind of team fights when you're playing real close brawl. It's kind of hard to get that advantage, but once you do, that team fight is usually over. It's you and I getting the crucial first team fight here, able to set up shop on this point, it's going to be really hard for Graceland to crack that egg. Yeah, exactly. I mean... What Graceland really needs to do right now is play around Jack Attack, because that's the issue when you're playing into a May with a Rhine. That positioning is just so important to try and win team fights. And of course, Jack Attack went in, got killed right away, right in the microwave hotbox, and that was just clean up from there. So let's see what goes on here as the second attack comes, and God Jedi was able to like, find the sleep from the May, try to save that. As yeah. looks like they're popping lamp here. And if you're Graceland trying to crack this point open, I, I'm not super sold on the way that they're going about it here. You want to try and hold that high ground as much as you can and then drop as all five. It looked like a few of them dropped pretty early and yeah. paying the price here. Yeah, exactly. They need to play more consistently and more together because you're playing essentially the ground game and every little bit of positioning counts, especially when you're playing that Ryan and using that poke from DJ on the uh, Reaper and Necrobird. Of course, that poke is very important, but just like that, you and I is able to take map one here in Nepal. Excellent, Nothing clean even. work. Nothing even close to a final touch coming out from Graceland. This is definitely you and I, uh, they're happy with their strat, and they played it fairly well. Maybe a few uh, untimely May walls, but Graceland really didn't seem to have an answer. Um interesting to see if they keep this comp moving forward i do like you and i swapping over to the sigma you get yeah. double hit scan coming out this uh has a lot of potential to be a fun comp for you and i yeah especially on the second map here just with how it sets up as we see now in lasting going to the genji Ooh. it's it's going to be interesting to see how they work around this hole in the center of the map so utilizing that, but the biggest thing is going to be the answer from Graceland. Map 1 wasn't their best map. They got the wind taken from their sails, but if they want to make something happen and happen fast, they got to do it on this map. Yeah, and I, I have a lot of questions about the comp from Graceland here. Um, there's a lot of spam, a lot of poke, um, but we'll, we'll see how yeah. it plays out. It's oh, actually, but actually, it's actually, able to play in favor. Cast yeah. cursing this here. Oh my goodness, you're doing it again, darn it. I'm doing it again. <laughs> oh no. With that early pick, and again, Moonlit goes down again. Necrobird is currently the one who got both kills for the side of Graceland, and you and I is pressing S, trying to get back out of the sight lines and conserve as Graceland takes the first tick and wins the first team fight here in the second map. 60% to ult there for the Junkrat is uh, kind of scary if you're you and I. You got to know that that's going to be coming here soon, but. Yeah, it's you and I really need to start together. playing together. Yeah, exactly. Everyone As we see uh, Coonrad trying to get some poke damage here, trying to get that off angle. But a trade right there for the side of you and I and J Jack Attack able to take out Moonlit. That's just unfortunate for the side of you and I again, poking around and Necrobird again getting the kill on Coonrad. This Graceland team is answering 
to what you and I is calling them for. Yeah, I gotta give Grayson some credit here. They're all playing together on the point, and, that ne and Necrobird is finding some insane grenades here on the Junkrat. It looks How would like you want to bet that that's his main? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, and here we go with the Sigma watch. Ultimate. This is where you and I needs to capitalize with huge grab. Gets the ultimate charge right there on Sigma. Wildcat able to take down JK Cage again with a double kill on Necrobird. And you and I could be sweeping this one up as 65% gets ticked over. But a couple members of Gracelander still there. But just like that, Jack Attack's able to take out Kudrad with a big kill on Karma. You know, I'm okay with how that fight went. You and I had to spend two to... Grayson's one ultimate, but it's going to be kind of difficult. You and I's going to have to get out in front of it, use ults early. Or else uh, Grayson's going to be coming back with those three ults. That yeah, and, ugly. and uh, DJ Cage already on 69% for the Psy, for his ultimate. So it's not even going to take like half a team fight to get that fully charged. And Graceland's going to have four ultimates to R3. So that's going to be something that they're going to need to cycle through here. As both of these teams try to go in there, as Bob is is popped. That was a great first pick out of Kunrad onto Karma. Right, and here we go with uh, Jack Attack trying to get the the smash, but can't quite get a capitalize on it, and gets killed in the process and pays for it. Graceland still trying to figure out what they want to do as they're down a tank. Looks like DJK just trying to go for the back line, but you and I is there to answer as a huge purple on the side of you and I and able to get that kill on that flanker. 51% now for you great, and I. Great, great recovery from you and I. Awesome uh, discipline from Unlasting, not using his ultimate there. As we come out yeah. with the Rubidic Flux, that should be... Ooh. Get and that's really there. big. That's really huge for the side of you and I. Excellent play of using Wildcat's ultimate. This is the cycling that we wanted to see. This is high-level playing right now on the side of you and I. Bend but don't break defense. Able to get it switched. And 75% already passing Graceland on their first hold. Well, you can just see it from their play that they never panicked. You know, they it's, it'd be very easy if you're getting picked by these this junk rat all the time. You know you're down in the ult department. It's very easy to panic and start to make some very poor decisions. But you and I right. have been able to hold on pretty well as TJ and, Page falls down. And that's another thing, too, is like they're playing the Reaper and the junk rat which are very pokey spammy kind of like flanking style characters and you and i is able to turn and answer as we see on lassie now with like a huge double kill as getting the blade as it takes on over to overtime and just like that you and i is going to win map one of this first to five i believe yeah great map from you and i yeah i believe it is a first to five but mm -hmm. seemed like a fairly fairly well put together plan cop wise and Maybe a little bit of stumble on a second point start, but able to pull it together, keep their composure, and make it back, win the point. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if that's one thing that really shows how well you and I is able to adapt to their situation and answer the call that Graceland, you know, because Overwatch, in a sense, is like a game of chess, if you really think about it at high tier play. Like, you'll, you'll have picks, you'll have counter picks. And you'll have different strategies to those counter picks. And I think you and I was able to play one step ahead. And that's what won them map one. Definitely. A great start from you and I. I believe we'll be heading over to a hybrid map next. Will be Graceland's pick. Uh, what are our three options again? Yes, we have Eichenwald, King's Row, and Parisio. Ooh. So, of course, uh, it was very interesting to see. We didn't see Wildcat on the right heart, which... Normally on this, we see, you know, Reinhardt, usually the rush comp in these control maps normally, but we didn't see that. We saw an Orisa and a Sigma, and it actually worked out really well for you and I. Yeah, I think for that first point, Reinhardt is maybe theoretically the better pick, but Wildcat mm -hmm. is probably, I think, made it pretty clear early on that it just feels a lot better using that Orisa. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, you know... It works out. I mean, Arisa's right. just kind of, it still works in the brawl, so. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I should know, because I played Arisa for a very long time, back when it was uh, goats. <laughs> back when Arisa was a, a campy turtle. A campy thing. with shields and not a oh, javelin. <laughs> do not miss. Do not miss that one. 
All right. So King's Row, Dreth, what are you thinking about as to the answer for Graceland against what we'll probably see uh, sort of kind of like a bunky bunker brawl kind of composition from you and I? Well, the Junkrat got a lot of uh, got a lot of traction early mm-hmm. on for them. So I'd probably like to see that, especially if they're playing defense. Looks uh, looks like they'll be attacking first, but I don't know. The Junkrat can get a lot of play in the, the early choke points and then the second alleyway definitely can make a big difference uh something like that maybe something something a little bit more spammy mm-hmm. some yeah i mean it of course we're going to probably say see jack attack on like a reinhardt or an orissa uh dj cage could probably play like a reaper or may necro bird obviously did a wonderful job getting those opening two kills on you and i on this on the last map on the junk rat, so I agree. I do believe we should see a junk rat. Um, Karma, I I can't even remember what the what the healers were <laughs> for the longest time because they haven't really been a factor in this. I think it was a a Moira. Pentahead was pay, playing Moira, and I think Karma was on Baptiste. I gotcha. I believe, but it looks hmm. like they're still going to be going. They go really heavy on the, you know, with. More, I guess, heal pace support heroes mm-hmm. instead of utility. Right. Um, and, and we see DJ Cage play uh, playing now the Genji, which is different from, which is still a flanker, but like a different flavor of flanker um, compared to the Reaper. So that's going to be interesting how they're going to be able to utilize him. Definitely. And I like the Junkrat and Hanzo coming out from you and I, especially with the with the Mercy on defense. Not only can you get the damage boost, but if something goes wrong. That's a long walk back from spawn, this first point. If you can hold the first point, it's going to be uh, pretty nice for you and I. So I right. like having the res available. Yeah, exactly. And we've seen you and I do full holds before. So it's going to be interesting how this is going to this is gonna play out as, again, both of these teams trying to feel out each other, see what the compositions are as Unblasting is able to get a huge kill on Necrobird. The first to go down, and every second is important when you're playing a map like this. Yeah, great pick from you and I early on. Don't want to be rushing in too foolhardy here, but they can exert a little bit more pressure in the 4v5 and just hold on to everything, see if we can get some more damage pumped in. Yeah, exactly. And as and as Graceland tries to get through that choke, putting huge damage on the side of you and I and a purple on the side of you and I, making you and I force the lamp as Vandium is able to take down DJ. But Jack Attack able to answer getting the kill on... The very important disc. Yes, the lamp. The all-important lamp. Actually, the funky lamp. The groovy the funky lamp, lamp, if you will. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because they are playing skins. That is true. And Vanium is just going on a tear here. Oh, oh no. Absolutely. That's nasty with a triple kill. And he's got tire ready. Of course, this man, his main is Junkrat, let's be honest. Much and... as I hate it, it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's true, but I mean, he he does a very good job, as we just saw that wonderful nonchalant triple kill right there at the yep, end of the, the team sneak, fight. The sneaky tire coming in. Yeah, all right, here it comes. Somebody might catch him on the stairs. God, okay. <laughs> that was very interesting, but hey, he able to get a double kill on that, that's Somebody very important. Man. Who is this kid? He just keeps on going. Really putting the brakes on. Ooh, and a huge kill from Unlasting. What I was saying is Vandium puts the brakes on this Graceland team, but Unlasting is doing the same. This output of damage that you and I is creating and forcing this choke, it could be a full hold as Vandium is able to get the Junkrat kill on the enemy Junkrat of Necrobird. And this is just ugly. And with Graceland now... Well, they pop window, but they had a majority of uh, ultimates, as I was just about to mention. Here comes the ultimates from all of them. But go down. Will he get res? Though is the question. Yeah, I mean, it, as we see this, as Blade oh. gets pulled out and a huge kill Dude. from Unlasting, an inhuman reaction kidding? right there. Unlasting Ooh. keeps on going with another kill. Follow it up, man. Come on. That's. And Vandium with the cleanup. Excellent bend, but don't break defense from the if side of you and I. You just log off for the night. 
<laughs> Call it an evening. I mean, wow. That is crazy. Yeah, the I mean... Time. I mean, you want to think it's... I, I don't know. That, I, I, at crazy. that point, that's just intuition. Like, you play that the is. game so many times, and... You just hear it, and you know that that's from behind as Graceland tries to use the Kitsune Rush, but again, still chuck, stuck in that choke point. Wildcat is able to push him back, get some of that CC. Wildcat but Necrobird able, it falls to really Wildcat. Good. And oh, a huge three-man tire from Vandium. You can't, oh my god. Oh no. Oh, what are we even doing out here, man? <laughs> this is, this is... Man, where, where's where's the where's the tap out button? This is this is this is dreadful. wonderful. Oh my goodness! And of course, on lasting again, using the ultimate, trying to get the space made from the dragons. Wonderful CC play there, I mean, from the side of you and I here. They touch. Oh my goodness! This could be a flip, but unlasting is able to get the kill. Gets the double kill from Graceland. Nope, Let's see, God's Jedi down. putting this down and another shutdown from Vandium this taking out over. Karma. Woo! And just like that, a full hold from you and I. I'm, I'm lost for words. This is just. This is. This is. This is. That's all. <laughs> it do be. <laughs> it's really do be. You know? I mean, I. You almost feel bad for him. Yeah. Uh, what you yeah, do, you really dog? do. Just... So, something like bot. Some, something like that. <laughs> All right. You and I, I, it's not that I want them to troll, but right. I need. I want to see something practice. Where is the wrecking ball? This is the question I've been asking. Uh, not one. the wrecking ball. Where is the wrecking <laughs> ball? Wrecking ball, legitimately good now. All right. Not even yeah. he, he anymore. I know, I know, that's Where true. Is the ball? I mean, to be honest, I would be okay with some not-so-comfortable picks from the side of you and I. I mean, we do see Vandium on the Widow. We've seen him open up on that beforehand, so... But, I mean, it's gonna... This is... This basically falls on the shoulders of Graceland, whether they can get a full stop or not, and that's gonna be an uphill battle for them. It really if is. If I does not get the first tick on this point, they deserve to just lose the whole match. You're making me spit I'm out my water. Now. I'm saying it now. <laughs> this has... Uh, oh, we got the dance going from God's Show. I know, I see this. This is very Looking nice. good. Vibing, as the kids say. But the kids we will do, have do vibe. Wildcat rolling out on the old tried and true Arissa. No fun to be had here, just oh, you and I. Unfortunate no-pick Hamter. See if God's Jedi can get an early pick and... Oh, yeah. well, Ooh, and Vandium's Vandium able to get the pick on Necrobird, which is going to be huge. And again, Unlasting getting the double kill on not only DJ, but on Pentahead. And it looks like it's a trade there for Karma. Well, that was but... fun, gamers. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> quick, <laughs> quick, easy. Cut the check. Wash the hands. We're out of here. Map two, you and I. Dear Lord. That was a time wasn't it yeah unfortunate i don't i don't I, I as much as i like the unlasting play of the game which that was, was this kill disgusting. right here <laughs> come on man i need mean, man's I, pc <laughs> check it for hacks check do it, it right now <laughs> that's crazy i mean what i was actually gonna think that play of the game was would have actually been uh the three tire three kill from, tire. yeah but, I mean, I mean that inhuman, insane reaction was, from Unlasting, like, he just stupid. knew. That was insane. How does that happen? Oh, man, that's tough. That's unfortunate. So, the the wind of Graceland is definitely out of the sails. Like, There's to be wind? completely honest. Is there wind left? It's like uh, SpongeBob's bag of wind. It's right. Empty. It it's gone. empty. It flew away. <laughs> yeah i mean okay so we're going on to escort next so you got the choice of circuit royale dorado junker town route 66 God, if you graceland circuit royale huh dude if they choose circuit royale i mean they will not make it around the first corner <laughs> 
No, they won't, because chances are we'll probably see Vandium play the... Uh, probably a Junkrat. Either, or probably just... Junkrat or a Bastion. Right. We're going to Route 66. Whew, okay. So we're probably going to see snipers from the side of you and I, probably. I Maybe. would assume at least the Hanzo. Yeah. Because you and I choose us to defend first. I, I'd assume the Hanzo out of un, uh, Unlasting, because that was working out pretty well. Oh, yeah. Let's see what and, Vandium decides to play. Yeah. And, of course, if we're talking about uh, what to pick if you're a Wildcat, I could definitely see, like, Sigma again or Orisa. Definitely the tank play has been very huge for the side of you and I. I, I don't want to call it a tank diff, but it, it's been very heavy-handed in the side of Wildcat. I don't want to, but I'm going to. It's a tank diff. Oh, Everybody. you said it. I'm saying it. It is. It's just uh, it's an unfortunate reality for Graceland, but we're doing well, you know? It's okay. Yeah. It's It's been good. I mean, we've been talking a lot. That last map was just the DPS popping mm -hmm. off, but mm -hmm. also let, let's take a second to thank your fellow support, you know? Oh, true. Yeah, keeping mm -hmm. them alive, and then the tank holding the line. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't go wrong. It's flashy to play DPS, but... Yes. That's gotta, true. I mean, that, that's that's a thing that we haven't even mentioned. Like, God's Jedi and Moonlit have done a really good job at staying alive. If you wanted to talk about the beginning of the year, Moonlit probably would have been the first to die for, like, half of those team matches. But I'm sorry, not sorry. But you could see that her ability to stay alive and realize where the positioning needs to be moonlit has done a very good job and frankly has grown a lot over the course of this semester well it ain't even mean to say because it's true but like moonlit has made such an oh what is the dancing going on here uh... moonlit has made such a great improvement over the year that like mm -hmm. it's 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 a great story to talk about for you and i mm -hmm. moonlit god's jedi i mean just the this support line is really solidified and you can yeah. tell they have a lot of synergy going on yeah, exactly. I mean, with Vandium really being the only returning person other than the coach, I mean, this is this speaks volumes at how well over the course of the semester this team has gotten. And I think the fruits of their labor are finally pay paying off as they're just, you know, playing this Graceland team, you know, just leagues above, you know, probably earlier on. And as we see right here, ooh, a huge pick from the side of Graceland and... They're able to pick it up, and this could be a good, clean sweep for the side of... Oh, for you and I. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I got the... They, they switch sides. It swapped. It swapped. Yeah, oh! I know. They're just trying to do the confusion on us, but... Oh my uh, I you and I got Jedi that. getting that opening pick on the Kiriko. Absolutely huge. And looks like uh, Necrobird has resorted back to the Hee Hee Bastion pick, see if they can grab something, yeah. but... I, even against a Sigma, I mean, mm -hmm. not super hot here, so. Oh, yeah. my goodness. And on last scene, able to get the kill on DJ there, just really. That's another thing that we need to talk about, is just how well you and I has been able to limit flankers. Like, between DJ and Necrobird playing the Junkrat, the Reaper, the Bastion, and now we see Necrobird on the Soldier. Hopefully, that's, that's more about on par of what we expect from this kind of pick. Oh, what a spray. That's cute. <laughs> what a spray. Oh, they're they're best of friends. Best buds. So you and I is just gonna sit here on their ultimates. I don't even see a need to use them. I mean No, not really. With how well you've been playing and wonderful sustain that they've been able to do, I don't think they need to use it. I think they just need to bank it and then if uh Graceland decides to use them, go ahead and use them. But we see a Kitsune rush here from the side of you and I as God's Jedi pops it open. And Wildcat is like, you're right. Just go for it. As we see Wildcat able to get the kill on Necrobird. They're just and, pushing up further and further here. Right. And just like this, it could be another full hold for Route 66. And I mean, I make it around the corner unless... I mean, there's a possibility maybe a Nano Blade comes through here eventually <laughs> if DJ Cage can build a blade. But... Oh, is that going to get him off the map? Oh, that was close. Oh, so close. Okay, I got, I got super excited for that. For I know, that would have been huge. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, oh. I mean, not much uh, 
to say here is mm -hmm. Vandium actually gets the nano boost as Echo. Right. I mean, just the ability that Wildcat's been playing, you know, pushing up when he needs to, giving the space that he needs to, unlasting with a huge double kill on the Deadeye. Just excellent play from the side of you and I. Just, you know, they're crossing the T's, dotting the I's, doing everything they need to do, and just sweeping the floor of Graceland right now. I'm running out so. of things to add to this. I know. <laughs> this really just, this, this do be a game of Overwatch. This this is a game of Overwatch, indeed. Overwatch. I mean, it, th I didn't even know if there was even a thing of full hold. Oh, and right there, Wildcat able to get the rock just to interrupt the Moira ultimate. I guess it's not a full hold now, is it? They got, they technically got meters, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not like they can't win. Well, right. actually, I, I shouldn't even talk it because I'm going to curse them. Yeah, you're going to do it again. <laughs> I'm going to do it again because this round is wrapping up here. Right. I mean, there's still there's still time left on the clock, limited as it may be. Oh, don't do that! It's, it's metal. metal. Oh no! But able to get, to get the combo and sweep up. Good job, Wildcat. Again, that just shows like the combo play and the ability that Wildcat has been able to to show, just because of the ability, you know, just that the dealt hand that Graceland gives them. So, but yeah, yeah I mean. 37 meters, I guess that's not a full hold, but they didn't make it past the first corner, which is usually... But I mean, let's be honest, the first corner is really difficult. Can I see the wrecking ball now? <laughs> is this an option? That would just make my evening if Wildcat decided to play the ball. Yeah, uh, use your mind. I must. Those are some are those burnt tires. tires. Yeah, those tires are on fire. Um, I think that's a hazard. That is that. I feel like this is the EPA burnt would rubber. have something to say about this place. Right. Oh my gosh! And there's no phones in the phone booth. What year is this? Uh, good question. <laughs> Come in. We're open. And the and doors looks like we might not get the. Uh, no ball, sad. No ball. No hamter. This is a sad tragedy. Sag. No hamter. Sag. Is <laughs> unacceptable. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna put one peanut butter in chat to express my sadness. <laughs> well, what? you gotta remember, like, it's on delay, so in the three minutes, oh, people sure. are finally gonna understand oh, why you well. put the peanut butter there. What have I done? <laughs> what have I done? Alright, on Lasting's turn to play Widowmaker. I say just send on lasting out to click five heads and then you win. All right. Well, let's see here. Oh, couldn't quite get anything on that first bit, but Ooh. Graceland using that Bastion for that long extended poke. We're seeing the Ramatra play as Unlasting's able to get a kill on Necrobird finally to start it off. And again, poking down that Ramatra, making Graceland utilize all their uh, resources as they are able to get the res on Necrobird. Bastion's back. Yeah, which it looks like they're going to pocket that Bastion, but of course Vandium really needs to get this kill, but Unlasting's able to get that picked up. And here's, this is the kind of flanker play that Glaraceland needs to play. And that's that. And just like that, you and I is able to win the match. All right, who Boom. we got for, who do we got this week? Who are we interviewing? Oh, that's a good question. Um, First off, let's talk about uh, favorite player of the match. Who'd you like? I'm thinking, okay. I know it's very easy to say one of the DPS for King's mm -hmm. Row, but big Wildcat fan. I think I say that every week. You're, yeah. I mean, to be honest, though, because Wildcat was able to play his game and play how he wanted to play, uh, you and I was able to just absolutely stunt on Graceland, to, to put it nicely. And But who's, I guess I also really like... Hmm. Because I, I feel like I always pick DPS or Wildcat. So I think this week I'm going to pick God's Jedi. I think God's, God's Jedi, Jedi did an excellent job. Fair enough. Just with, you know, because none of the healers got picked. It was just play your own game. There was a couple clutch saves, especially on, on map one in Nepal. Uh, getting that save on the May, that was pretty huge. That prolonged the bend but don't break defense on Village. So I, I like God's Jedi. 
All right. Well, I'm going to overrule you because we've already interviewed God's Jedi this season. Okay, so. that's fair. That's fair. Boom. Boom. Okay. Wait, have we interviewed Wildcat? No, I don't believe so. I don't think so. Okay, I'm going to ask if we can interview Wildcat. Let's see. Let's see. We want Wildcat. We want Wildcat. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooga booga. I can, once I get confirmation, I will move them into here. We will interview. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Hello? Wildcat? <laughs> hey, that's me. We hey, that's Wildcat you. With us. Yeah. Welcome to the stream. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for playing your wonderful game today. <laughs> <laughs> Can sure you maybe I... talk a little bit about, you know, your mentals going into it and then kind of how it felt after Li Zhang? <laughs> or not um, Li Zhang, uh, Nepal? Uh, Nepal, yeah. Um, Honestly, I mean, it was a, a little worrying because we've been off on spring break this last week. Uh, so we haven't really been playing at all. And then we had a practice yesterday. Um, And then going in, we were kind of just... You know, seeing what was going to happen. And then after that first point on Nepal, we were just like, okay, well, we can probably do this. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I like the confidence. Definitely <laughs> winnable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yep. Okay. I, I have to ask before we get any further into this, how badly do you have to be beating a team before I can see you play Wrecking Ball? <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that was probably pretty close, I'll be honest. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'll be, I'm not an amazing wrecking ball player, but I could definitely start practicing if that's if that's what you guys want. <laughs> that's that's I, my I mean, personal request. That's <laughs> you know, if you if you stunt on another team, I'm OK with maybe like one team fight play wrecking ball. OK, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. All right. But yeah, since we're finally got you in the in the 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 booth, finally, can you maybe talk about, you know, Maybe who your favorite tank is to play? Like maybe okay. uh, yeah. who who do you like? What kind of style do you like to play, Wildcat? Um, I'm kind of all over the place. I'll be honest. There, I play pretty much every tank except for like Ball and Zarya are the two I don't play the most. Um, but as of right now, I've been playing a lot of Orisa and Sigma mostly. I'm pretty sure that's all I played today. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, ever since. I started picking up a recent near the beginning of the season. It's just been a lot of that kind of rush comp style. Mm -hmm. um, trying out the Reinhardt as well. So just kind of, that's probably my favorite play styles rush. I'd have to say. Do you have yeah. any overwatch league tank that you look up to and try to, um, Oh God, what's his name? That's a uh, Hattie. I think is his name. The Spitfire tank. London? Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. I yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just started uh, recently getting into competitive Overwatch, just like being of the season, right when the Overwatch League like uh, Grand Championships were going on. Gotcha. Uh, yep. Yeah, and I really enjoyed his play style. It was really cool. The chatty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So, um, I guess another thing too is I've I've been told that I've been told two things. The first one is that you're kind of like the shot caller for the team. Is that mostly true? Like, what is your communication style with your team? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Mostly just like, uh, just pointing things out as I see them. I don't know. I, I do feel like, <laughs> I don't know if I'd consider myself the shot caller, but I, I do uh, definitely rely a lot on uh, everyone else to be helping me, helping uh, feed information as well. But mm -hmm. pretty much if I see anything that I think would be worth calling out, like any uh, like flanks or ultimates or anything that would be important for like, especially the supports to know, then I just call it out as soon as I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that, and that's most of the important thing is to call out what you see in front of you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, of course, sure. never being able to be the designated shot caller, I guess that's never really on the team, especially at a, <laughs> on a good team. But yeah, definitely, actually. The second thing that I wanted to ask you is I've heard you're an absolute crazy man on Roadhog. Is this true? <laughs> Your fans are wanting to know. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> I can confirm that, yes, I am a fairly good Roadhog player. Um, but like ever since the nerfs a while ago, the one shot, <laughs> it's, it's much harder. So... <laughs> Ever since then, I have not been playing nearly as much Roadhog, but I, so, I definitely do want to at least play one game of Roadhog this, so this season. Sam, we'll probably see the Wildcat Hog before we see the Wildcat Ball. 
<laughs> it's possible. Yeah, what are what are the odds? What are the give me the odds? Give, what's the spread here it's on like, this wild, wild cat? Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably more toward dog. It's like a sixty forty. Let's go. Ah, there you go. <laughs> ha ha! Take that draft. <laughs> We'll see Roadhog next week. Confirm. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe. There we go. Yeah, next time the map opens up on Ilios, I better see a hog play, okay? Mm, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm down Ilios, for that. well, make it go. I would love that, honestly. <laughs> All right. Well, again, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Your fat W tonight. In record time, you got time to go play some Jenga or something now. I don't know what kids <laughs> yeah, do their true. free time. Yeah, I don't know what games you play to decompress. <laughs> what do the kids do anymore? But yeah, go watch some Overwatch League or something. Oh yeah, that's that's tonight, isn't it? Yeah, yeah the cool. pro yeah. All right. Well, yeah, yeah thanks, thanks a lot for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining us, Wildcat. Yep. Thank you. With that, I think uh, probably all we're going to have to to add for the evening Jaeger, thank you for joining me. Pan, thank you very much for putting the production together, making it all go. And uh, like that's about it. 